What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Fantasy Football Busters podcast. We're on episode number two recording for today. Uh, we're recording this on Tuesday morning, October 18th. Mm-hmm. Um, we're getting into our week six recap. We did our injury recap earlier this morning, so if you want to check that out, get some injury news, check out our previous video. Um, but yeah, today we're getting into all of the news and notes from around the league in week six. Uh, my name's Eric. My lovely co-host over here is Will. How you doing today, man? Dog, I'm feeling great, man. Ready to keep talking some football. Ready to get into some player-specific stuff now. You know? Yeah. And if you haven't sure. checked it out, we have our injury recap as well with a little bit more. So you guys can check that out. You know, came out earlier this week. Something slight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Something slight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's, uh, let's dive right into it. I don't want to keep the people waiting too long. Week 6 recap. Things are crazy, man. What is going on in fantasy football land? I saw a tweet by Matt DeSorbo saying that these first six weeks of fantasy scoring are the lowest that we've seen in 13 years. It's down 22% even from last year. Um, And it seems like this week that trend was made especially clear uh, with scoring being down across all positions and just a lot of disappointing performances from big names. Um, It's it's crazy in fantasy football land right now. What, What are your takeaways so far this season? Yeah, I think this season, the best word to just describe it so far has just been unpredictable. Uh, The guys who we thought were studs started out kind of slow. Some of them are regaining some footing, but all in all, it hasn't been great all across, especially in terms of just predictions and what we thought some of these teams were going to do. Or just when it comes down to how these players are performing when it is their time and when the bell's getting rung, they're just not getting it done. But stuff has started to, I think stuff is going to trend a little bit more upward going forward, but that's kind of all we can really hope for, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it seems like the NFL is just lacking consistency. Like the the consistent high-powered offenses that we expect to do well each and every week, there are very few of them this year. Um, Yeah, there's a lot of... Parody and like uh, Tom Brady said last week, there's a lot of bad football being played this year, um, including by Tom Brady and the Bucks losing to the Steelers. That was a rough one, but uh, yeah. I think he was still right in saying that. So, yeah. yeah, a lot of a lot of crazy things going on. Yeah, definitely agree. It's been a it's been a weird season, and I I think it's gonna keep being weird. Honestly, I, this is gonna be a strange one for all of us to get through. Yeah. But with that all being said, let's get into some studs and duds. We'll start with the positive first, the studs for the week at the quarterback position. We had Joe Burrow, Joe Shiesty going off, uh, finally having his bounce back week. Um, And being the QB number one overall this week, also supporting Jamar Chase and his bounce back week as well. Uh, How did you think the Bengals offense looked this week? No, they looked really, really, really good. Honestly, Uh, it looked like they finally started to get some footing back. Uh, Joe Mixon... I'm not going to say they had a bad week, but not the best week in the world. But yeah. in terms of the, how this offense looked, yeah, it looks like they're kind of firing on all cylinders. Uh, the offensive yeah. line looked a lot better than it had prior weeks. It looks like they're starting to click a little bit more now. That's really what we've been hoping for for the Bengals, that, is that offensive line starting to click and mesh together. Uh, and I think that's going to be the key to kind of unlocking some fantasy success from that group. Um we also had a surprise Matt Ryan in the group as the QB2 overall this week. Uh, I have a note in here. He dropped back to pass 58 times last week. Just an absurd number. Uh, he also didn't turn the ball over or take a single sack in the entire game after leading the league in both of those categories through five weeks. Do you expect to see more of this from the Colts and Matt Ryan, or is this a one-off? So I don't expect to see him drop back the pass 58 times ever again. No. But... <laughs> I do expect this line to sort of perform the way they did again. Uh, Again, this is another offensive line that's been underperforming so far this year. And they kind of did take another, not another step up, but they did kind of step up more so to where they're supposed to be. So I think Matt Ryan should be a little bit more protected. Uh, His drop back should be a little bit more valuable. But I kind of got to see him do it twice before I really, really believe that this Colts team is on the up and up. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I'm not totally sold that this is what we're going to see going forward. That offensive line has dealt with a lot of injuries, um, and they're still not back to full health. So I think maybe this Jags team is just kind of spiraling, and that's the result that we got, although it was fairly close. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in wait-and-see mode for this Colts offense. Um, 
And then the last of our studs group from the quarterback position is to be expected. Josh Allen just keeps going off. He's the QB1 in fantasy. Nothing else to see here. Yeah, man. I think if, uh, if Urban Meyer was still in the league, he'd say, yeah, that uh, that number 17 guy is pretty good at football. Who's that? <laughs> so Josh Allen, he's right where he needs to be right here on this list. I love it. That's fired. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's get into the running back studs. We got Ramondre Steven season, baby. He's eating out here. He's eating. Let's He's dominating go. all of the touches in the Patriots backfield. And uh, the Patriots surprisingly successful with Bailey Zappi leading the way. Yeah, Bailey Zappi looking pretty good. It's I think it's yeah. a lot of people are gonna give the credit to Bill Belichick, which, you know, I don't I don't know why people do because he's not really an offensive court coach. But this offensive coordinator that got over there, who who's who is the offensive coordinator for the Patriots? So yeah, be careful who you're giving credit to here. It's yeah. a combination of uh Joe Judge and Matt Patricia, I think. Dog, those are <laughs> both those are the two names you don't want to hear when you're giving yeah, praise no. out. <laughs> yeah. But I will say they have they've been able to turn what should have been a sour situation into something at least somewhat decent. I will yeah. give them that at least. As head coaches, no. But them performing in their roles, they honestly Bill Belichick's always pretty good at choosing people to work underneath of him. So Yeah. It's good to see. It's encouraging to see when <clears throat> Mac Jones comes back if any of that's gonna transfer over, but all stands to be seen. But Ramondre Stevenson definitely stepped up. And that was something that, you know, I'm not going to say we called it, but uh, I think we called it there. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. yeah, so great to see him performing and producing at a really high level, the RB1 on the week. And then a surprising name on here, Dion Jackson. Uh, the second string, third string prior to Jonathan Taylor going down for the Colts. Uh, and stepped up into a damn near bell cow role. Uh, looked fantastic, really explosive. Uh, caught a lot of passes out of the backfield. Um, unfortunately, he went down with injury, I think, late in the game, but still put up a huge fantasy week. Um, it, it seems like Jonathan Taylor is probably going to come back healthy next week. Um, and so for me, this is more of a good sign, a good omen for what Jonathan Taylor is going to see in his future and what we can expect from him going forward. Yeah, if he gets this level of uh, involvement, especially Deion Jackson with 10 catches out the backfield, if John and Taylor's even able to get a fraction of that, that's good in my books, honestly. If he gets 50% of that, that's good. And we know he's going to get more of the rushing floor. And we know that, obviously, Jonathan Taylor is a better running back than Deion Jackson. So I think going forward, it, it shows brighter days ahead for the uh, first overall pick. Yeah, and then some names that kind of just missed – that stud category, the the twenty point threshold, uh, Eckler, CMC, Leonard Fournette, guys that you expect to see up there. Good to see them continuing to produce. But then some more, uh, not necessarily surprise name. I guess Kenyon Drake was a surprise, mm -hmm. considering J.K. Dobbins was healthy to start the game. We talked about that a little bit more in our injury recap, uh, our last video. Um, it seemed like J.K. Dobbins, his knee tightened up or something around halftime, so Kenyon Drake got more involved. Looked pretty good, uh, but. Again, we talked about it in the last video. I expect that to be a committee going forward. So he might be worth an ad just as a one-week thing if J.K. Dobbins is still dealing with this knee issue. Um, but I don't expect him to do much of this going forward past that. Yeah, very much agreed. And then we got the, also have the two rookies on the list as well, Mr. Brees Hall and Mr. Kenneth, ah, Kenneth Walker, both yeah. showing out this week. Brees Hall definitely hitting his stride. And Kenneth Walker is showing that, you know, he can handle that role and he's doing really well within it, honestly. Yeah, they're both balling. Um, man, in, in Dynasty right now, the argument can be made for Brees Hall that he's RB2, maybe even RB1. You can start pushing him up there, man. It's pretty crazy. Um, and in season long, he's absolutely locked in as an RB1 going forward for the rest of the season. You love to see it from him, even in a Jets offense that uh, – can't pass the ball. Zach Wilson can't do anything. It doesn't matter. Brees Hall is getting all the work and looking great. Uh, and pretty similar for Kenneth Walker. He's he's balling as well. Yeah, I've never seen a quarterback just benefit from his team like Zach Wilson has. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Ob obscure reference, but uh, Rex Grossman did make it to a Super Bowl on the back of the Bears defense. So True. another quarterback that benefited from his team True. so much. <laughs> sexy rexy man that's a name i haven't heard in a long time right yeah. yeah 
All right. His uh, his quick five seconds in the limelight. Yeah. He's never getting that again. So, moving on to the uh, wide receiver position, uh, we got some of the we got a lot of the usual suspects. Mr. Jamar Chase having his bounce back week, a huge bounce back. back week. Seven catches, 132 yards, and two touchdowns, I believe, off the top of my yep. head. Insane. Yeah, we knew he was going to be back, and he's back. Uh, Stephon Diggs balling out as per usual. Brandon Ayuk, a name that I had brought up earlier in the preseason. Had a big week this week. Hopefully we can see more going forward. I don't think it'll be this big, but at least a little bit of consistency going forward. But always great to see him hit this list because that is one of my guys. And we got Mr. Tyreek Hill, who is right now on pace to uh, beat the single yardage receiving record right now. He's on pace. Yeah. Yeah. Is he on pace for over 2K or is it like just shy of that? I think he's on pace for over 2K right now. That's crazy. Yeah. So Tyreek Hill having a good, good season. And yeah. uh, do you have anything you want to say about these guys besides uh, you know, Brandon Ayuk was sort of the outlier in this group? Yeah, so Diggs, obviously we've come to expect this from Tyreek Hill. Basically the same thing as long as you know he's got Teddy Bridgewater or Tua throwing him the ball. Um, Jamar Chase, great bounce back week. We saw uh, Joe Burrow walk into the stadium where they won the national championship wearing Jamar Chase's game worn jersey from that national championship you knew that narrative was coming the blow up game was here and it happened so that was cool to see uh and yeah brandon Ayuk. um i think he benefited from an interesting game script we talked mm-hmm. about this in the injury video also uh the atlanta falcons got up big on the 49ers early the 49ers defense has been dealing with a lot of injuries so they weren't able to run the ball like they normally like to lots of pass attempts for jimmy g which is kind of unusual i don't know whether we can expect consistency from that going forward but definitely a positive sign for Ayuk. Yeah, definitely agree with you there. And just to name the people who just barely missed it, just barely missed this list, we have uh, Chase Claypool of the Steelers. We got Mr. Michael Pittman, someone else we were ringing the bell for earlier. And we got Juju finally making it onto the list. Finally. Yeah. Uh, With Chase Claypool, we kind of talked about him as well in the injury recap. Uh, to say that I would expect any type of consistency from any of these Steelers wide receivers with the quarterback situation being what it is, I don't. So it's kind of just going to be whoever is the guy that week. So if you're rolling with the Steelers wide receiver, you're kind of just rolling the dice and hoping it's you. But um, I'm not super confident in Chase Claypool going forward. It is good to see that he is still able to perform at this level. But again, it's kind of crazy. But Michael Pittman exploded this week only thing he was missing from his stat line was a touchdown honestly because everything else is what you want to see from a receiver that you drafted with the draft capital that you got michael pittman for uh yeah yeah you i will let you i'll let you take that one because he went insane that was the type of alpha performance that we've been waiting for the performance that we drafted him to have um and i think Hopefully, you know, we talked about Matt Ryan and this this Colts offense maybe turning it around. If that's the case, then I expect to see a lot more of this coming down the pipeline for Michael Pittman. Um, you know, I, I can't quite put my expectations that high, but this is super encouraging after what's been a disappointing few weeks for him, for sure. Yeah. Um, and then Juju, kind of the same sentiments that we echoed for Claypool, except just in a much better offense. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, I, I give him a little bit more benefit of the doubt, but... Yeah, I don't see consistency from Juju coming forward. Yeah, it, like he, it's like we said, it's good to see that Juju is performing, and hopefully we can get some level of consistency out of him. But it's it's almost like this offense, it's really weird because Claypool's in a situation where his offense is so bad, we don't know who the ball is going to. And Juju's in a situation where his offense is so good, we don't know where the ball is going to. So yeah. two different sides of a very similar coin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That'll transition us into our tight end studs of the week. Uh, we got Mike Gesicki of the Miami Dolphins. Man, he won't give up grittying. Did you see him try it again? That was dude awful. It's it was, so yeah. funny. I think he's just like he's just into it. He's just yeah, I suck at this, and he's, I'm gonna keep doing he's it. He's trolling everybody. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he did say the last time he was gonna go home and practice. It does look like he's practiced. So not a lot. Not well, Not a lot. <laughs> but he's been practicing. <laughs> he's been practicing with Kirk Cousins is what he's been doing. <laughs> oh, God. 
but uh, from a from a fantasy perspective, a uh, really big week for him, over 20 points. Um, again, I don't know if this is one that we can expect to continue. Uh, his usage has been kind of up and down. Um, early on in the season, he was used mainly as a blocker. Um, he, he's getting a little bit more involved as far as target share and usage in the passing game, but still, this is a pretty tight funnel with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. Um, so I expect that to be, you know, their, their main offensive output and Gesicki in the tight end landscape that we have is definitely worth a start, but probably not going to be consistent. Yeah. Like I, he's made, he's going to be a boomer bus guy, most likely, you know, yeah. he's no Andrews or Kelsey who are also on this list. Surprise, surprise. Uh, <laughs> Mark Andrews had a pretty huge week. Also <laughs> dropped a pretty, uh, probably a game saving touchdown, the game winning touchdown also. So yeah, it's a good fantasy week, not a great week for Mark Andrews football wise, but like real life football wise, but you know, it's seven catches, 106 yards and a touchdown from your tight end in fantasy. You can't ask for anything more than that. And that's what he gave you. And then, yeah, t- I didn't actually get a chance to watch this game, so I didn't see that, but yeah, I guess a chance for an even bigger week. Mm-hmm. You could make the argument that Andrews is the tight end one in fantasy football right now. Kelsey did drop four touchdowns last week, but, uh, yeah, both of them straight balling. Yeah, and Kelsey, Kelsey just doing Kelsey things. Only thing he didn't do was see the end zone. And someone who barely missed the list, but we're so glad to finally fucking see him here. Ah, <sighs> Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts into the end zone, baby. Let's go. He finally scored a <laughs> touchdown in America. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, go Kyle. Uh, honestly, terrible game outside of the touchdown. Yep. I think he went, what, three for 16 or something? Yep, three for uh, 19, three for 19. Three for 19. Give Thank him those you. three yards. But, uh, yeah, finally found the end zone on American soil. Very happy for him. He was clearly really excited in the end zone. Um, yeah, glad to have Kyle Pitts back in the mix. Unfortunate, though, the Falcons can get away with winning and running the ball as much as they do. So I don't see this offense turning around as far as their pass catchers getting more involved. Yeah, I, they're, they're getting away with robbery over there, man. I don't understand it, yeah. but it is what it is. They're winning games, so nothing's going to change, but you, you kind of hope for a little bit more. 100%. Yeah. So that will do it for our studs of the week. Let's get into the duds of the week. There were a lot of disappointing names and big names on this list. Um, I have a name on here. I'm, I'm going to start with somebody else just because I was personally hurt by this guy last night. Justin Herbert, man. Mm. Justin Herbert. I don't know if you guys saw. I don't know if y'all are degenerates the same way that I am. But DK Sportsbook put out a line where they odds boosted uh, Justin Herbert initially minus 800 to throw a single touchdown pass in this game boosted it to plus 100 i bet on that and for the first time in his or no, second time in his career he didn't throw a touchdown pass i'm pissed i'm livid what are we doing la chargers what are we doing brandon staley joe lombardi terrible performance by both of those teams ah, i don't know what to say yeah it's it's absolutely insane to see like justin herbert just kind of flounder like that and to yeah. see the odds switch the way they did was crazy. I will also remind, uh, make sure, gamble responsibly if you do. Don't be like us. Don't gamble. You don't got to do it. But, you know, it's it hurts. It definitely hurts. Yeah. Speaking of hurts, Jalen hurts. Yeah. Oh. He had a rough week. Uh, this one really wasn't was his good. fault, man. That was good. Thank you. Appreciate you. <laughs> uh, this one wasn't his fault. This was game script. They got up super early on the Cowboys and just throttled down. They didn't have to do anything to win this game. It ended up being kind of tight, but it it was never really that scary for the Eagles. I think they knew that they were going to win this game handily. Um, And so Hurts didn't pass the ball much. He didn't run the ball and risk it. It was just that type of week. Yeah, they were in the driver's seat early. It's nothing much to really say about that. Nothing to speak against Jalen Hurts. It's just literally game script. Yeah. And somebody else who underperformed that kind of hurt me a little bit this week, uh, Mr. Geno Smith. I'm not going to say he's super underperformed. He, he did, but at the same time, he didn't put up an abysmal week. You know, he's not Russell Wilson out there or anything. Um, <laughs> he just didn't, wasn't able to throw a touchdown, wasn't able to run for a touchdown. Uh, There's another game where Seattle was kind of in the driver's seat after a while. Like it was back and forth with a lot of field goals. Both teams weren't really able to get things going, and when Seattle finally did, the Cardinals just couldn't, 
and they just they ended up losing. It's kind of the best way I can put it. Uh, I yeah. mean, going forward for Geno Smith, it doesn't really change anything for me. I still saw, you know, the pass attempts. He still dropped back 31 times. It's just some stuff that has to get tightened up. And like we've talked about, DK Metcalf did not have a great game because the Cardinals are very good at bottling up that number one receiver spot. So Geno Smith obviously yeah. is going to also hurt from that as well. Yeah, shout out to our TikTok account. I put out, or we put out a video uh, of our starts and sits of the week. DK was my sit of the week due to, you know, the the Cardinals defense and their ability to shut down number one wide receivers. And yeah, like you said, they were able to run the ball and dominate a really bad Cardinals team. So they didn't have to pass it that much. Mm -hmm. So I'm not uh, out, you know, at all for the rest of the year. Um, Lamar, another disappointing performance against the Giants in a loss. Um, just not being able to pass the ball. It's hard to blame him too much considering he has almost no weapons outside of Mark Andrews. Uh, hopefully Rashad Bateman coming back next week. If he does come back, it seems like that's what's trending to happen. will help him out. Um, what do you think about Lamar going forward? Lamar going forward, I think he's going to be fine. It's never really been a, like you said, he just doesn't really have anybody right now to throw the ball to. And I think when he starts to get more of his weapons back, this run game also gets a little bit more solidified and, I think, I think that's going to help him a lot. I really do. I think it's going to help a ton. Uh, Rashad Bateman, he's always kind of been his over-the-top sort of deep threat kind of guy, but also has the talent to be a possession receiver as well. So I'm kind of interested to see how they use Rashad Bateman when he comes back. But in terms of Lamar, I'm not scared off of Lamar. I think he's going to bounce back. But this Giants defense is also a lot better than people give them credit for as well, I will yeah, say. 100%. Yep, and then uh, Kyler also making this dud's list. Um, Little shit. He finally, uh, he finally started using his legs. I think he got over 100 yards rushing, which totally saved his week because he couldn't get anything going through the air. Uh, I don't think this Cardinals offense scored a touchdown this week. Uh, they really can't get anything going under Cliff Kingsbury. It's just been rough all around for them. Yeah, they're just they stall out a lot, and I don't understand it because they do have some dynamic weapons. Especially just having a quarterback like Kyler Murray should be, it's going to keep you in the games. But for some reason, this offense can't get going. They can't really get going on the ground unless it is Kyler Murray running. Um, yeah, it's just really weird to see. Like, you would expect this team to be a lot better than it is because it should be a lot better. But yeah. And, and now Hollywood Brown going down for probably an extended absence with his foot injury. They do get DeAndre Hopkins back, but. Uh, it might not get better for this Cardinals offense. Yeah. It, and it hurts and to then, see, but it is what it is. Yeah. And then our last dud at the quarterback position, Tom Brady. Uh, yeah, this Bucks offense, I don't know what they're doing. Against the totally depleted Pittsburgh secondary, they lost the game. Uh, all the Twitter narratives about Tom Brady got, skipping Wednesday practices, going to Robert Kraft's wedding on Friday, flying by himself, not with the team, to the game on Sunday, and then yelling at his offensive line for not supporting him. All around bad news for the Bucks. He's he's having marital issues, man. He's going through th he's going through things, man. <laughs> you know, I don't think we've ever really had a situation like this where like it's been so public that a player is going through this. Yeah. And I kind of feel for Tom Brady because that's that can't be anything good. We know he's active on social media, so he's seeing this stuff, yeah. and it's it's not it's not great. It's not what you want to see. <laughs> um, that whole yeah, it was Robert Kraft's wedding that he was at, right? Mm-hmm. Tad tad concerning, tad. But I mean, yeah, he's having marital issues, man. It is. <laughs> <laughs> he's still a goat. <laughs> he's definitely he's definitely still the goat but this season it's it's not trending well we'll see what happens going forward for them yeah loss to the Steelers is definitely not what you want though as a contending <laughs> NFC team contending yeah, contending oh there we go uh, yeah yeah let's let's get into the running back position we'll start off with Jeff Wilson uh, who had been performing really well like we said earlier, this was a game script thing. Um, they got down super early and just had to pass the crap out of the ball. Um, so I, I don't think that this is any fault of Jeff Wilson's, but I will note uh, that with all of their running back core getting healthy again, uh, TDP, Tyrion Davis-Price coming back, potentially Elijah Mitchell coming back, uh, even if this game wasn't Jeff Wilson's fault, it still might spell an end to his consistent fantasy viability. Yeah. It's 
Yeah, it's going to be a carousel over there. They're definitely going to go committee approach, especially now that everyone's returning, like you said. It's just, yeah, Jeff Wilson's going to end up getting relegated back because he was never really the starter to begin with. So once Elijah Mitchell comes back especially, I think his role is going to decrease significantly. And then with everyone coming back, it's just going to be whoever's healthy up, honestly. I think that's how they kind of run things over there in San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, another sure. name that hurts to see on this list, uh, Aaron Jones. Packers are just really bad, it's looking like. They're really bad. Um, this running back situation is really bad. It, They just lied, man. I'm going to keep saying this every every week. They kind of just lied with saying that Aaron Jones and uh, A.J. Dillon were going to be super involved. Now, I will say in prior weeks, Aaron Jones did have better weeks, but that was based off of efficiency even. That wasn't even based off of a volume perspective. So these running backs have not gotten the volume that they said they were going to get. Especially Anything. the targets. Yeah. We're talking about throwing Aaron Jones the ball so much and he just hasn't seen it. It like you said, it sucks to see him on this list just because of him as a player. We know he's better than that. But honestly, at this point, I'm not really surprised. No. This, this has been the case and it might continue to be the case for Aaron Jones if the Packers keep playing the way they do. I will say we did have him listed as a sell high weeks ago. So we did indeed. It's just <laughs> it's the roller coaster, man. Yeah. Um, and then we got Raheem Mostert on this list as well. Uh, we knew with Raheem Mostert it was going to be a roller coaster ride. We were happy to see him perform well last week or, or the week prior. Um, and he was dealing with an injury coming into this week, so he might have been hampered a little bit. Um, we definitely saw a little bit more involvement from Chase Edmonds than we have in previous weeks, so that may be due to a slight injury. Um, I'm not giving up on Mostert yet. Uh, just a little bit of a down week from him. Um, and then. Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt both find their way onto this list after both having great starts to the season. Um, I don't want to say I predicted it because Nick Chubb was the RB1 overall in the season, and I, I couldn't get myself to go out on a limb and say that he was you know, going to start underperforming. But he had a, such an easy like cakewalk of a schedule from a running back perspective to start the season, and now it's going to get really, really tough for him. Um, and just this Cleveland Browns offense as a whole. So uh, I still think that Nick Chubb is absolutely incredible and he's going to have good games, but it's not going to be quite the same as what we saw at the beginning of the season. Yeah, I completely mirror that sentiment. He had a great start to the season. Stuff's going to start to get a little bit hairier now. We've kind of seen how he's going to play now with Jacoby Brissett back at quarterback. So there is at least a little bit of comfortability in that as opposed to what we had at the beginning of the season. But with these matchups getting tougher and tougher, it's just, like you said, it's going to be tough sledding for both of these running backs. Um, but I still think Nick Chubb, he will be able to find some modicum of success. You know, every team isn't going to be on their best every week. But, yeah, I mean, if you got Nick Chubb, you kind of got to start him regardless. But I think yes. brighter days, the brightest days were in the past, but there's still going <laughs> to be there's still going to be some good weeks. Yeah, no, no doubt. Um, and then the last two names on this list, uh, kind of guys that we expected, not necessarily for the reasons that we expected. J.K. Dobbins, um, we knew to kind of temper expectations for and that they've been going with a committee approach, easing him back. Uh, we heard that he re-aggravated his knee a little bit or his knee tightened up on him after that first half. So he didn't see much involvement after that. Kenyon Drake came in um, and took most of the work from him. Um, you know, we talked about all this stuff with Kenyon Drake and the, the committee, so we don't need to get too much back into that. But then uh, CEH, man, we knew it. We've been telling you to sell high for forever. Everybody's been telling you. That's not something that just we've been saying. I'm not going to take credit for it. But uh, clearly coming to fruition, it's just uh, it's not his time to shine. Yeah, 100%. CEH, he's not that guy right now. Maybe one day he'll be that guy, but he's not that guy. I doubt that one day he'll be that guy. J.K. Dobbins, <laughs> J.K. Dobbins, this down week. This is probably going to be a down season for J.K. Dobbins, honestly, until he really, really does start to get a little bit healthier because there is some signs that he's not at 100% yet. We've seen this before with players with less significant injuries than J.K. Dobbins sustained last year occur, like we saw with Saquon Barkley last year. Um, it's just it's going to be a process, but hopefully we'll get there sooner rather than later. And yeah, fuck CEH. So, yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> let's, get, let's get into our wide receiver duds of the week. 
Um, we started off with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. We talked about these guys when we mentioned Geno Smith. Um, the Seahawks were able to just run the ball all over this Cardinals offense and didn't really need to pass it much to win this game pretty handily. Um, like I said, we, we did we did kind of call it uh, a down game for Metcalf against this Cardinals defense. It's good at shutting down wide receiver ones, Lockett. Similar deal. Uh, this Arizona Cardinals secondary is just better than a lot of us kind of expected coming into the season. So that much we pretty much already covered and then i wanted to put isaiah mckenzie in here just because you know to balance it out i don't want to give myself too much credit i had dk metcalf as my sit of the week but i had mckenzie as my start of the week and he really shit the bed it looked bad um uh, i did mention that i was a little bit nervous that khalil shakir was going to get more involved after last week's performance we did see a little bit of that um i think he ran 15 routes to mckenzie's like 32 30 something like that so it was about half but i would expect that number to start evening out actually after McKenzie's down performance this week. Um, any more thoughts on that from you, Will? No, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I think um, they're going into their bye, aren't they? The Bills? Yeah. Yeah. So roles usually do typically change right after bye weeks when teams really evaluate who the players are, stuff like that. So we may see Khalil Shakir get a pretty big bump up and Isaiah McKenzie get bumped down. That is a, yeah, I'd say that's a very realistic possibility. Yeah. And then uh, some bigger names on this list, Mike Evans. Uh, just a down week overall from the Bucks. A, a weird game. It seemed like uh, Tom Brady was only looking at Chris Godwin. Um, didn't really have eyes for anybody else. Uh, you know, Chris Godwin's really good. He deserves the targets. But obviously Mike Evans has been balling this season and been helping his team out. So, Already after the game, they came out and said they need to get Mike Evans more involved in weeks going forward. So I don't expect this to be a trend for him. Yeah, I definitely, I don't, I, brighter days are ahead. You know, Tom Brady's going through marital issues, man. So, you know, you hope that stuff's going to get better. Stuff's going to straighten itself out. At the end of the day, you know, Tom Brady's going through whatever he's going through, but he is a professional football player and he is a highly competitive one at that. So this team's going to bounce back at some point, hopefully. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, Curtis Samuel finds his name on this list. I really don't want to rehash this commander's conversation that we had in the last video. If you want to see us rant about how bad the commanders are and just their fantasy options, go check out our, our injury report video. Um, uh, Curtis Samuel had a great start to the season. That was cool to see. Probably not going to continue for anybody on this offense. Yeah, I will note too, Curtis Samuel dropped a big touchdown pass as well. Wide open touchdown pass. Was not able to yeah. reel it in. Don't know if that speaks more towards Carson Wentz, Curtis Samuel, or just the overall commander's luck. But like we said, we're not going to get into it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to uh, yeah, and then yeah, you got it. Now you do it. You do it. You do it. <laughs> now, just to to round out this list, we got a uh, Cortland Sutton from uh, the Bad News Broncos, and we've got Mike Williams from the Chargers, which kind of makes sense considering Justin Herbert struggled. Uh, and wasn't able to throw a touchdown. Obviously, Mike Williams wasn't able to catch a touchdown. Um, this is these two teams have been weird. This whole division's kind of been weird, but you kind of hope to see more out of both of them. But with Mike Williams, it's kind of what we signed up for as well. We know he's a very boomer bust type of player, and it doesn't help that Justin Herbert was seeing the struggles he saw this game as well. So Mike Williams going doing poorly. We didn't really expect that. Cortland Sutton is a bit more of a disappointment. Uh, he had been leading the team in targets, leading the team in just overall receiver stats. And Cortland Sutton this week was just not able to put it together. Only two catches, 14 yards. You'd like to see more out of him. But when you got Russell Wilson, the system QB back there at quarterback, you don't really know who the ball is going to, you know? Yeah. Yeah, It's it was a scary ride with Cortland Sutton, even when he was producing, just because this offense was so bad uh, yeah. and the way that Russell Wilson was playing. You had to expect a down week like this was coming, and it hit hard this week. Um, and like you said, yeah, Mike Williams, this is the roller coaster ride that we signed up for when we drafted him. Um, I, I am a little bit concerned just in this offense as a whole. They've not performed up to the expectation that we had for them coming into the season. Um so I, I do want to lower my expectations on Williams a little bit, but he's mm -hmm. been balling prior to this. I think he's going to have much better games going forward. He also got robbed, I thought, of a crazy, ridiculous catch on the sideline. I don't know if you guys saw that last night. Uh, it won't be last night when this video re uh, releases, but the Monday night game, 
Um, I thought he caught a crazy deep bomb, but they ruled it out of bounds. So a little bit off of his fantasy output from that. Hate to see it, man. But it's what we signed up for as Mike Williams owners. Yep. So that'll do it for our wide receiver does. We'll get into our final position at tight end. Tyler Higby finds this list after being a really, really consistent producer throughout the first few weeks. Um, and then what did he see? One catch? I, I don't have the stats in front of me, but really, really disappointing game. Did almost nothing. I think he scored like less than a point. Yeah, Tyler Higby, one catch for seven yards. So in half yeah, PPR, so he got you 1.2. <laughs> yeah. So a rough week there. Um, I, I don't expect that to continue going forward. This target funnel in the LA Rams offense has been Cooper Cup and Tyler Higby almost exclusively. Um, so I think Brett is are ahead, but... Yeah, just this offense, again, so bad. So there's going to be dead games from these guys. Yeah, agreed. And same goes for uh, Dallas Goddard had a bit of an off week. Taysom Hill. Uh, we kind of assumed, like we had talked about last week, when we said, hey, Taysom Hill might be an interesting tight end to add. We said there are weeks where he's going to win you games. There are weeks he may not be super effective. But, again, it's what you kind of sign up for with having Taysom Hill on your team. And yeah. it's kind of what you're signing up for in just the tight end position overall, kind of. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, Goddard was a victim of game script again. They just didn't mm-hmm. have to throw the ball much. Uh, Taysom might be in line for a huge week next week if Andy Dalton can't go, if James Winston can't go, which it's looking like that might be the case. Could start at quarterback in your tight end slot, so have fun with that one. Yeah, we got Taysom Gate on its way again. <laughs> I can feel it. It's going to be so great. Heck yeah. So that'll do it for our studs and duds, and we'll get into our buys and sells for this week. Um, We've been doing pretty good up to this point. Uh, Last week, uh, we had a couple misses, but that's going to happen from time to time. Um, We had Jameson Williams on our list. That's not a miss. He just hasn't seen the field yet. Again, I would still encourage you guys to go out and see what the price is for him. If you can buy him low, I would love to add him to my team. Mm -hmm. Christian Kirk. I actually want to ask you about this one. He's a guy that we were both super high on in the pre-draft process, exploded out of the gate and has been uh, disappointing as of late. What do you think is going to be his fantasy production or like outlook going forward? Um, I think it is time to get a little bit worried. You know, before I was a little bit more optimistic that he was going to bounce back. I think now I'm starting to see that maybe not, maybe it was just, you know, a bit of a hot streak to start out the season. Yeah. Um, I am a little bit nervous. I don't know if I'm hitting the panic button yet, but he hasn't really seen my lineups in the last couple of weeks as well. So it's just, yeah, I'm kind of waiting it out to see what happens, but it may end up being a dud. Yeah, I think I'm in agreement with you there. Unfortunate for Christian Kirk. Um, we had Drake London on this on this list last week, um, with not with this week in mind. His schedule going forward from this point on mm-hmm. is much better. But that that's another one where it's hard for me to really get behind at this point just because Atlanta is running the ball so heavily. They're barely passing, and they're winning games doing it. So I don't know that that's going to change. Yeah, they've been very successful in the run game. And then other receivers yeah. we had on this list as well. We had, obviously, Mr. Uh, Jamar Chase, who had a huge week. Uh, We had A.J. Brown, who also had a pretty big week, uh, all things considered with the Eagles game script. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, who's yet to return back to the field, set to return this week, hopefully, you know, barring any set. Well, no, he should be back this week. He played before the bye. Yeah, it was was the bye week that kept him out, but hopefully he's back to 100%. Yeah, not on a pitch count, hopefully. And then the Miami wide receivers, who both of which performed. I know we didn't have Jalen Waddle in our studs, but at the same time, he still had a really good week. Six catches for like 129 yards. Not too yeah, shabby at all. Really good. Yeah, so those were all positive buys for us. Let's get into our buys for this week. Uh, some big big names on this list, like we mentioned in the duds category, Mike Evans. He's coming off of two you know, less than stellar performances. Um, and like we said, we just expect this offense as a whole and Mike Evans specifically to bounce back. I think this is an easy buy. Uh, he's going to be so much better down the line. Definitely agree with that one. Hundred percent agree. It's just this can't this team can't keep seeing. It's just bad luck. Honestly, it's bad luck. Uh, we'll say there's some external issues going on as well. But all in all, it's a football team. It's a great football team. They're gonna end up getting it together. And then T. Higgins finds himself on this list um, after dealing with some ankle injury issues. Um, last week he 
the week before last week, he put up a goose egg, but that was due to re-aggravating the ankle injury. Uh, this week, he saw a, he was tied for the team lead in targets with Jamar Chase with 10 targets. Um, but just uh, based on the way that the game went, he ended up still kind of having a disappointing game. Um, so if you're able to buy low on him, his usage, usage is still really high, um, and it's going to kind of flip-flop back and forth between him and Jamar Chase, who's having the big game. So I still think he's got really bright days ahead of him. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, as the weeks go on, that ankle is just going to get healthier and healthier. And, you know, he's going to end up he's going to end up getting back to where he was at. Uh, another take Rashad Bateman for us. Yep. Another by low we've got is Rashad Bateman. He's uh, coming back off that foot sprain. Uh, Harbaugh is saying that he should be good to go this week. They're getting they're going to take it slow and make sure. But, you know, Rashad Bateman coming back could be huge for this team who has needed the receiver help for sure. Uh, you may be able to get them for a low price because there could be a team out there who hasn't had Rashad Bateman for the last couple of weeks and they've been hurting. Uh, if you're looking, if you see a team that's like that, you know, make an offer, see if there's anything you can offer them that they've been missing for the last couple of weeks. Um, hopefully it's not a receiver because then they're just going to keep Rashad Bateman. But, you know, you can probably see if there's one of those teams out there, someone who's one in five or someone who, you know, two and three. That's how, that's not how numbers work. Four. Two and four. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody who needs the help. So, you know, take a look around the league for that. Uh, another buy low target, Taysom Hill, as we mentioned earlier. Didn't have the best week this week, so you may be able to get him for a good price, especially if you're in a home league who's not paying attention to the fact that Andy Dalton and Jameis may not play this week, uh, which a lot of people are going to act like, oh, I didn't know that that was happening. That's cheating. Just wait, bro. We're going to see it this week. You're going to see it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Taysom Hill, a good buy low candidate, especially considering as inconsistent as he is as well, may also be a good selling point for you to be able to buy him and say, hey, I'll take yeah. that if you, you know, you can find some more stability here. Yeah. I mean, he, he's going to be boom bust, but you can say the same for all tight ends across the entire tight end landscape. Uh, and I think he's probably worth a buy just for this week alone. He might win you a week if he plays starting quarterback for the Saints. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and then a guy that's you know kind of iffy on the list just because I doubt people are willing to sell him. But if there's any impatient uh, Jonathan Taylor owners or anybody that has Jonathan Taylor that's just been really bad, um, has a really bad record, if you can try to offer something for him, we mentioned Deion Jackson and his performance. We expect you know JT, who's clearly the better running back, to slide into that same role and hopefully explode for fantasy going forward. Yep. And then so that will do it. Yep, yeah, you got it. <laughs> that will do it for our buys this week. We keep stepping on each other's toes, but that's all right. We'll get it together. Um, we will get into our cells. Uh, I want to mention the guys that we had on our cell list from last week. We had Joe Mixon, um, who did find the end zone this week, but that was kind of what saved his fantasy week. Other than that, he was fairly disappointing and inefficient again. Um, Beamont didn't do much of anything again. He was kind of saved by some some late game receiving um but still under 10 points total and michael carter that was one that we threw on there just hoping you can sell high off of the two vultured touchdowns clearly he's back to his you know backup role behind breeze hall mm -hmm. and i'd say those are all good sells it's like and like we said before it's just because someone's on the sell list doesn't mean they're not a good football player they're not going to be good in fantasy it just means we're looking for a little bit more consistency and out of these three, Joe Mixon, like we said, he's been very inefficient. Uh, David Montgomery has not looked like the better running back in his offense. I'm sorry, like it's just the truth. Khalil Herbert has looked like the better running back so far this season. And Michael Carter, we knew he was going to end up being the backup at some point, and it feels like we finally hit that point. So if you were able to sell him off early, yeah, that's you probably got something good. You got something better than having Michael Carter on your team right now, hopefully. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. So that will lead us into our cells for this week. We're getting spicy again. We had Mixon on it last week, and I know some people were probably wondering whether that was a good idea or not. Another big name on here, and I'm curious to see your reaction to this one, Will, because I, I kind of went solo. Uh, we have Dalvin Cook on this list. Um, he did have a decent week, uh, but it was salvaged by a crazy breakaway touchdown run, and he was fairly inefficient besides that. So I want to hear your opinion. No, I absolutely agree. I think Dalvin is a sell high. It was, he's somebody that in one of my leagues I was thinking about trading away off my team at this point. And it's not because I don't like Dalvin. I like Dalvin Cook as a player. 
I just don't like all of the extraness that comes with having Dalvin on the team. It's just, it's a lot of stress. It's a lot of, is he going to be, is he going to get hurt? Is that shoulder going to act up again? Is it this? Is it that? Because before that 53 yard run, he was having a very pedestrian day at running back back there. Like he was, I think it was a, what, a 53 yard touchdown? Yeah. That's 11 out of the 18 points that he scored. So it's just. Yeah, that's not that's not really what you want to see out of your first round pick and someone that you invested so much capital out of. So if you can sell Dalvin away for an RB1 price, I would 100% say go for it and see what you can get back for him because you may be able to find someone who suits your team a little bit better. Yeah, I wonder, we just mentioned JT as a potential buy candidate. If you could flip Dalvin for JT, I would a million percent do that deal if that's something that you can make happen. Yeah, I 100% agree. I think JT is in the better situation, and he's the more I don't. I'm not gonna say he's the more sure thing, but it's feeling like he is the more sure thing, you know. So I guess I gotta say he's the more sure thing. Yeah. Um, and then staying in that Minnesota Vikings offense, Adam Thielen. Uh, again, I think he was also kind of bolstered by a touchdown. Um, otherwise, he didn't have a very good week. He's had a, a few. Decent weeks in a row, uh, which is why he makes this sell high list. Hopefully you can get something out of him because I don't expect that to continue going forward. Yeah, I agree. I don't think uh, Adam Thielen is going to be super consistent going forward. He's going to be very touchdown dependent to be a fantasy option, which he's kind of been working his way towards anyways. So, yeah, I think Adam Thielen being on this list makes perfect sense. And then these last few guys are, again, similar situation to why when we had Michael Carter on the list. If you can get some people that are willing to, you know, take the bait, then it's great to get them off your team, but I doubt it's going to be that easy. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, who had his blow-up game this week, hasn't done much prior to that. Chase Claypool, same thing. And Mike Gesicki, who we talked about in in this tight end landscape, I wouldn't mind holding on to him. He's going to have his boom games, and that's going to be good for you, but it's definitely not going to be something you can expect all the time. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, it's just situations where we don't, these are teams with no – well, not not true. Kosicki, we know where his funnels are, and it's not to Kosicki. That's what the issue is there. <laughs> and with Juju and Chase, we just don't know who anything's getting funneled through because either the offense is really good or the offense is really bad, you know, respectively. And we just don't know who the go-to guys are in that instance, you know. So it's hard yeah. to bank on either of those – either of these three. Yeah, for sure. So I think – That'll do it for our week six recap video through our studs and duds or buys and sells. I hope you guys got something useful out of this. Uh, if you did, please drop us a like. That would be very much appreciated. Helps us out a ton. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification. All of those good YouTube things help us out a ton. We would uh, really, really appreciate that. Before we get out of here, Will, you got anything else left to say to the people? Hell yeah. Make sure you guys check us out on our other socials. If you check down in the description, you'll be able to find links to our Twitter accounts. You can check out Eric for any of the fantasy news he posts. You can check out the people he follows for more fantasy news. You can check out my posts for some fantasy news and just general shit talking as well, which I'm sure you can get on <laughs> Eric's page if he's in the right mood for it, you know? <laughs> but um, <laughs> also down in the description, we got our TikTok. You want to follow us there. We uh, post a lot of content for waiver wire editions, start sits. We got a fun little spin the wheel challenge going on right now. So we got a lot of good stuff going on on TikTok. Uh, a lot of the stuff that uh, you won't see here, you'll see it over there. So make sure you check us out there. And if you made it this far in the video, as always, we love you. And we hope you have a great day. Peace. Peace. I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning again. How could I lose? I was born just to win. Could never lose, so I'm winning again. I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning again. I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning again. Minute by minute, I'm meeting the end.